Well, Tim Hortons store number one museum. It's on the upper level of a newly built store. Welcome, I'm Hawaiian Shirt Papa. Sometimes with others, I visit a variety of antique, vintage, and thrift shops within Southern Ontario. Sometimes we don't get anything. Come tour with me vicariously. So here we are in the stairwell going up to the second floor museum of the store number one of Tim Horton Donuts. So it was the very first one while Tim Horton was still alive. He set it up with his business partner who I understand was a police officer at the time. And this is the original sign or it's been a recreated uh, a sign. It's posted up in the stairwell these are the early uh, rep some of these are just these are just reproduction cups from the of the first version and the donut uh, box as well here's the some instructions it's not the full instructions for making their donuts but it has some guidelines for this for the whoever is working in the uh, uh, shop at the time I'm sure they didn't have many of these uh, original items left over from even though they were probably used in very many of the stores. So the Eastfield cutter, the Timbit cutter, the ceramic cup that they had, they're all been redesigned since then. There was a Timbit character cutter for uh, pie shells apparently. Uh, they haven't been seen in stores in a long time. East ring cutters, you can buy coffee by the pound in the store. You can get it in the grocery stores nowadays. Tim Horton donut bags. I think they've gone to a very plain bag nowadays. What the, an early uniform in, there's a sample of the actual uniform and how it looks on some, one of the staff. That little uh, crown, let's call it, uh, uh, Tim Horton donuts. Tim Horton coffee, yeah, I still remember those. Mom would drink that. And there's the Timbit cutter again. Closer up, a closer view of it. So the old prices were pretty good compared to today, of course, but it was also different, different stuff. At that time, they actually made the donuts in the restaurant. Currently they are partially baked in a central facility and it's shipped out frozen changes their consistency the original donuts were actually far better they had a couple of employees they made very specific and uh, endearing um, notice of uh, considering they were working at the this location for 20 or 30 years so uh, yeah, having dealt with the the oh, the franchisee when they were in in high school, that's uh, quite the story. So this is uh, a little bit of that story there. This is the second a woman who was working at the Tim Hortons store number one. Getting through to some of these has gotten sadly color colors had faded in the photographs um, I did the best I could to improve the colors hopefully it didn't offend anybody I wish they would just redo the images so that they could stay fresh and perhaps with some ultraviolet protection so this is the actual setup of the booth for the 1960s 
the booth. I'll call it a booth in this one because they they did some. This is a vignette kind of setup for this the 1960s. So there's the cash, the counter where you pick up your goodies after they're, they get them ready for you. And that's Tim Horton. He played for Buffalo Sabres at the time and he unfortunately crossed the median on the Queen Elizabeth way and was hitting a, cr <coughs> hitting a uh, head on collision. Um, I not going to get into the details as to what the circumstances were because I'll probably get it wrong. The 1970s had some some differences, not very many at this point yet. The uniform had changed by now. Some of the other things had stayed. There was a little caricature of the Timbit. There's a red one and a transparent yellow they had them in full color you see the on the middle top brown with the yellow ear kind of things those with the timbits or the characters they had for timbits so as we move along into see there we go oh the donut bag had changed by this point they also had glasses for use in the store in the 80s by the 80s they were starting to really expand they uh, changed the look of their bags a few times apparently I think they even had ashtrays in the store at that time the uniforms kind of stayed the same from the 70s through to the 80s they still have a dark kind of uniform some of the current ones harken back to the earlier 60s i think the 90s i'm not sure if they yes they did go beyond that in this museum so now you start to see the the uh, different cups for traveling Some of the other things that they started into the iced coffee at that point and some of the promotions that they used to get to that point they expanded the type of mugs they started becoming annualized so that you'd be encouraged to buy a new one each year usually around christmas time As you can see, they varied each year. Yeah, continued variations. And the disposable cups also varied. They'd have commemorative type cups uh, for some seasons. And they had started getting into Christmas de decorations, even. I'm not sure if those were already the K-Cups there. They had some, some little activities for the youngsters. And then we started really getting some. There's the K-Cups. The donut box really became quite different. It, instead of being a bag, they got into the travel mugs into a different completely different style and even uh, some oven mitts uh, tea, teapot from Tim Hortons into the 2000s then we started getting into the Timbits hockey may have been on earlier but they certainly expanded it by then the uniform became the same for males and females at this point a lighter lighter colors and they had some special colors sometimes for uh, some of their promotions 
the roll up the rim, the annual roll up the rim. Uh, now I think it's become a virtual one on the app. So well, uh, I, I, I think it's a lost opportunity. Online I understand, in the app I understand, but it's not the same as getting a physical cup and actually having that feeling you have a chance of winning something on a very random basis. They got to pretty good prizes going in, in there. They did sell lots of coffee during the roll up the rim. They had they handed out free donuts from the rims, they handed out free coffees and some other prizes that came along like bicycles and cars and jeeps and lots of different things that they were handing out over the years that varied, the cups varied. They told you how much of how many of these vehicles they had that particular year. Sadly, some of these cups have started to lose their color from the ultraviolet from the uh, fluorescent lights. Tales from under the rim. There's lots of stories from there, I'm sure. And uh, Tim Hortons was also in Kandahar in Afghanistan. So the boys in the military had an opportunity to actually get some of their home favorites. So they, they certainly would have been uh, chuffed by having the opportunity to get their roll up the rim even there. So we're, that's about it, folks. Um, hope you enjoyed this. It's a nice place to visit. There is an elevator. It wasn't working when I was there or it had been turned off because they're using it for uh, the washroom cleaning because the washroom clean the washrooms are upstairs. Although there's a an accessible one on the first floor. All right. Thanks a lot, folks. Bye-bye. Hope you subscribe and that you give us a like. Thanks. Bye.